What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Michael here, Shy City Acker, hopefully all is well. And I know a lot of us are excited to get back out in the water for 2021. In fact, I have, uh, just the other day I went out. Unfortunately, the fish weren't cooperating. Tons and tons of bait everywhere in the Southern Basin, at least where I was, but uh, no fish biting. Maybe because they were already full from all the free, free food that was uh, swimming around over there. In fact, the seagulls were dive bombing them for hours. It was that much bait pushing up to the surface. It was pretty crazy to see, but uh, hopefully we'll get some fish on camera for you soon. Specifically, I'm looking to get out to do some uh, casting for cohos, which is something that I haven't got on film for you guys, although I've done it plenty of times. Uh, I just realized I never did a casting for coho video, so hopefully we'll get that to you in the near future. However, let's talk about today's video. It's been highly requested, and I wanna do a complete breakdown Kind of a guide on how to use torpedo divers and explain to you why i believe that they are the best uh kind of weight solution to use if you're trolling uh out of your kayak and i'm going to kind of cover the a different re a couple different reasons why specifically when you compare them to uh downriggers a lot of guys will use downriggers on their kayaks like these mini downrigger setups uh and while they're good for getting you down deep and what I believe I could say about them is that they give you a bit more precision in your depth because of the way they work. Uh, you can precisely get down to that depth if you're using a big ball. There's a lot of other things that I would say are not good about using it, specifically as it pertains to kayak fishing. Uh, one is it's an additional weight you're adding to your kayak. Uh, it's big and clunky. You have to find a place to mount it on your kayak. If your kayak already doesn't have a layout that's feasible for it, then you have to do the work to create a DIY setup to, to even get it onto your kayak and mount it on there. Uh, then you have, to, you have the weight of the ball. And then there's the big safety issue, which I think a lot of people don't really think about for whatever reason. And I'm always looking at things from a safety and efficiency perspective when it comes to kayak fishing. Well, when you look at a downrigger, uh, God forbid you were to flip your kayak, but you've got these two big things sitting off the sides of your your kayak um, Normally they're mounted in the, in the middle of it, right? Right like right next to you or near you wherever you're sitting be realistic Could you re-enter your kayak with those things hanging off the sides? Is it going to interfere with your re-entry? Is it going to be uh, in the way of you getting on there? Is it going to be a lot more work? You have to exert to, you, so, you see where I'm going at with this so I, there's there's quite a few reasons why I personally don't use them and I would recommend to not use them because I feel that torpedo divers give you uh, the ability to get the depth, a little bit of a trade-off on precision perhaps, right? But it's just more efficient. When you think about the fact that if you are paddling or pedaling your kayak, that's your own energy you have to, you're have you having to expend to, to troll, do you really want to add that additional weight on the kayak from the downriggers plus the balls you see what I'm saying? Not to mention the balls themselves are not exactly hydrodynamic, right? Like as they pass through the water, it's another form of resistance. So all of that compounds and it means that there's more energy you have to expend. And if you think about that, that means that there's less time you would probably be on the water because you're going to get tired quicker. However, with a torpedo diver, as the name suggests, looks like a torpedo. Why are torpedoes used in submarines? Because they cut through the water, very hydrodynamic. There's very little resistance. Once it pops over here, it's very little resistance. It cuts through the water, which means it's less resistance in the water, which means it's less energy you have to expend by using this while you get the depth that you're looking for to uh, target these fish. Um, there's no safety implications with this. You can have them on your rods. If the boat flips, you lose a rod, Hey, you can flip back, uh, flip the kayak back over, re-enter. It's not going to impede your ability to get back into your kayak. So this kind of check, bar, check marks a couple different things that I feel are important uh, when we talk about trolling out of a kayak. And now that I explained why I personally uh, prefer and recommend torpedo divers, uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. I'm going to flip the camera around, give you a kind of like a tabletop view of what we're looking at here, and we'll dive into this a bit more. All right, guys, here we are with the torpedo divers. I have a couple different sizes here. I'm going to go over. I feel as though these three are kind of like the good uh, all around three to have if you're going to do this. Um, and starting at the front here, we have the two ounce torpedo. It's called the snapper. Here in the middle is the eight ounce called the musky. And then the big boy here is the 12 ounce, which is the Cuda. 
Um, if you had to pick one to to have and use, I would definitely say it has to be the musky, the eight ounce. It's a good all around one to to work a variety of depths. Um, the snapper here, I, I generally would use this when I am either coho fishing or walleye fishing. Uh, it's two ounces. I'll tag this on and say, let's say, troll a Brad's Thin Fin, which doesn't go very deep at all. It goes a couple of feet. So by adding the two ounces here, I can take that lure and present it uh, maybe 10 to 12 feet if I wanted to, where maybe I see coho or sitting at. And uh, whereas if I were just flatline trolling that crank, it wouldn't not get near that depth. So there's 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 good ways to use this, especially for walleye fishing. I really like the two ounce. Um, so you get down to, I would say, no more than 20 feet with this thing if I'm going to work it, you know. Uh, the musky, uh, I'm generally using this one here for 20 to about 50 feet in that range. And then anything over 50 feet, I'm going straight to the uh, CUDA, the 12 ounce one, to just tank it down all the way really quick down to the to that depth all right so that's kind of like the ranges that i would use each one of these and typically another cool feature about the torpedo divers here if you look at the tail ends it's, it's made out of a very thin like uh what, whatever the material is here right it's very thin it's bendable and what that means is if you wanted to similar to like a dipsy diver i could bend the tail over to one side or the other and that would make the torpedo kind of swim in that direction now it's not something that I use simply because I think it'd probably be more effective to put on a planer board of some 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 type to then take your presentation off to the side of that you're trying to do rather than using the tail on this thing. So, um, but I do want to at least show you that it is kind of like a feature you can do. Another thing to be mindful of is if you have these in a tackle box like I do and they shift around, uh, that these fins can bend. So every so often you have to check and make sure that they're all straight and aligned so that you're uh torpedo isn't drifting off in the somewhere you don't want it to go and as you can see they're all pretty banged up but that's just the paint uh the paint over it you see here specifically the the big boy here is putting in a lot of work um generally i'm fishing this towards the very very bottom just off the bottom sometimes it'll drag into the bottom luckily on lake michigan it's the bottom is like a sand or just a soft bottom so it doesn't really uh hang up in there but I've used this one to get deep if I'm targeting like lake trout along the bottom or just off the bottom of brown trout. Um, this one's pretty clean just because it sits in the middle of the water column a lot of times. So there's nothing to interfere with it. This one's just banged up just because it's been moving around the tackle box. All right, let's talk about how exactly do we set these things up here. We're going to move these out of the way. All right, right, let's just use the uh, little two ounce one here. All right, now there's two ways to go about setting this up on your line to use. There's a fixed way, and then there's the, uh, I guess we could say like a uh, release way. The first version, the fixed way we're going to need here is a steel leader. Any steel leader, same thing you would use for like pike fishing, right? So you don't get the pike to, to bite through your line. A steel leader. You have the snap on one end, and then you're going to have uh, the swivel on the other end, and that just kind of comes with the steel leader. You're going to add a bigger size snap to it and then you're going to need a in this case a church tackle is what i'm using you can use other kind of clips that they make out there or make some as well uh, i'm using the church church tackle clip you're going to connect it through the little bottom hole that's right there to the snap you see how that works and then when you go to put it on your line you're going to simply open it up and jam your line in there now let me show you here how we set it up you're going to take the torpedo you are simply Put it through the snap. Oops. Apologize, guys. I'm, my head, uh, the camera's blocking my view, so I have to kind of lean around there to do this. So it's not as easy as it normally would be. So we get the waders on there, as you see. Then what we're going to do here, and I have my main line here. I have a rod pulled out to kind of show you how this works. We're going to take the line here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to hold the main line. We're going to let your line out. As you're setting your lines, let's say you put it out 30 feet back. I want my, my lines to be 30 feet out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to close the bale and we're going to reach down for the main line and we're going to open it up and you're going to shove the line into the crevice of the clip. I got it in there pretty deep. The reason for that is because it'll keep it snug in there. It's not going anywhere. You can adjust the tension with the clip here with the little screwdriver thing. Um, if you're wondering whether or not this is going to go anywhere, it's not. Even with this thin 30 pound braid, it's wedged in there. It is not coming off your main line whatsoever. 
it's it's not the only way it's coming off is if you were to put it your main line at the very tip right something like that could pop off of there but if you wedge it down deep into the clip like i have it it's not going anywhere all right so you can have confidence that you're not gonna you know lose this setup uh these torpedoes are not cheap they're about 20 a pop 20 or more actually depending on the size so i can understand your concern with losing this but it is in there it's not going anywhere it's it's hard lined fixed onto your main line now i've been using this setup for years and people will say well how does this work you know when you when you reel in your fish you're going to get to a point where the torpedo is out of the water and you can't reel it reel in anymore because it's blocking you from you know reeling in because it's it's fixed onto your main line that's right the way to go about this is you're going to have to reach down to your main line as, as it's coming out of the water and you're going to have to ever so kind of uh, methodically right as you're trying to manage the fish on the line you got to hold your 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 main line while the fish is on you're going to keep tension on it you're going to carefully reach down unclip it off your main line drop this into your kayak and then at the same time you're going to slowly re you know start to let go of the main line while keeping tension while you feel that fish on your line you're going to let it go let it go let it go until it tightens up enough where you can reach down to your rod right and pick up on that slack so you can pick up that tension again and continue fighting the fish now the way i described it you're probably sitting there like holy hell you must have lost a lot of fish doing this you're actually incorrect i have lost more fish from broken hooks uh bad knots and line pops than i have from you know uh hand lining and pulling off the weight from my main line if you're just getting started with this and you go this route it takes a little bit of time to get used to it but it can be done and I've maybe lost one fish this way. Now, if this is not something that you are really kind of fond of doing, that's all is fine. There is another way to go about doing this where you can have the weight on your line, uh, but that when a fish hits, you have the uh, weight kind of free spool or free free line on your main line. Does that make sense? Let me kind of show you. It's probably better to just kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Now, the way we would go about this before, there would be kind of like a little jerry rig DIY setup where you'd have to get a couple different components, connect them together to then make this setup work. However, I recently discovered a company uh, that makes this device that kind of puts it all together, the idea of what we were doing before into this one simple little solution that I am actually really excited to use, and we have it right here. It's called a Ready Rig. Now, full disclaimer, this is an endorsement. This is not an ad. I bought this with my own money, and I have not used it yet because I just got it at the beginning of this year, and we don't use these uh, torpedo weights until summertime anyway, right? Right now in the early spring, you could just flatline troll everything, and uh, you don't really need to worry about uh, the, you know, getting down deep. Once we start getting into that time period where the fish are deeper and we have to break out the torpedo weights, this is absolutely going to be used. And I'm excited about it because what this does is it takes the idea of what we were doing before with like this DIY, DIY setup to uh, connect your torpedoes onto your main line and then set it up so that it would slide on the main line once a fish hits. This kind of gives you like a ready to go system. It's already done. So as you see here, we got a snap in the front. We got a snap in the middle and then in the back you have these two rubber like gaskets plastic little gaskets over here now let me show you how this thing gets rigged up uh the front snap is going to go onto your main line so we'll get my main line here i can reach for it so we're going to take the front one and we're going to simply just put it through the snap and we're going to close it down boom now we're on the main line. All right, we're on the main line. Next, we're going to take the middle snap. And we're going to connect our weight to it. And again, you have to, I apologize if I'm trying to stay in focus, but I'm also hindered by the camera that's in my face. So we're going to try and make this work as clean as possible here. Okay, we got it on. Now we're going to snap it closed. And now we have the system set up. Again, the front snap goes, uh, the main line, again, the main line goes through the front snap, the weight goes through the middle snap, and then what we're going to do here to finalize this setup is we're going to go ahead and make a little twist, and as you see here, you put your thumb right at the end, you grab a little bit of the sides, 
And when you push down on it, it opens up, right? It opens up the little gaskets here. And we're going to stick the line right up in there. The deeper you go, the tighter it's going to be. All right. So I kind of want to get in there. This is going to be something of a, a, a bit of a um, trial and error for me to figure out how deep I need to put that line in there. But now what's happened is it's no longer free spooled. It, now it's fixed on the main line. As you see here, as I'm moving it, it's not it's not moving. It's it's stuck on that line. It's not going anywhere. Then what happens is once a fish hits, pops off the main line, and now, as you see here, we'll spooling my line through here, spooling my line through here. Here comes the big bead and the snap swivel that I have my leader connected to. And it's about six foot of line of leader, rather, now what we have here is a system where you can clip on the weight once a fish hits that weight is off of the main line if you will it's it's kind of freely on the line it's not interfering with the fish um and you don't have to also worry about have to manually taking it off your main line you can reel the fish all the way in get it into the net and then go ahead and reset this whole line I'm really excited about this because it's it's literally a one-stop quick solution to um, you know have this whole thing work. And as you see here, this is how it slides through. It's the bead. It's not going anywhere. It's it's just sitting on there. It's gonna bobble right just like this. As you're fighting the fish, it's gonna be bobbling around. Um, but in no way, shape, or form is it gonna interfere with the fish. Uh, and because it's kind of free on the line, it's not gonna impact the um, you know the hook. Uh, in the mouth of the fish, right? So it shouldn't interfere with that. So we have a really clean setup, and I'm really excited about this. And again, once you know you're done, we set out your line again. Let's make a quick little twist. Open this thing up. We're gonna jam it in there again. Oh, right about there. Now we've got our setup. All right. Now we're it's fixed. Right. We're fixed again. You see, here's the line. It's not going down there. I'm holding it up. It's not sliding down. Fish hits. Boom. It released. I am really looking forward to putting this uh, into practical use, and you can expect a more thorough, um, a more thorough kind of review on this, as well as another uh, product they make that I'm also really excited to use. That one I'll be able to use a lot sooner. It's their version of a of a planer board, uh, but it's very unique and different than say the yellow bird stuff that we normally see guys using. So uh, be on the lookout for me to share more on that very, very soon. And uh, if, if these turn out to work as, as well as I hope and I think they will, um, I'll be looking forward to sharing that with you and, and getting that out there so you guys can implement that into your setups as well. Now, don't forget the key thing with this setup is you're going to need a bead. All right. If you don't have the bead, this thing's going to slide into your uh, you snap swivel and because the opening is pretty big. It's very likely that the snap swivel can go through that and this can go all the way down to your main line all the way to the the all the way to the fish and you don't want that so you got to have a bigger size bead in here to stop it from from passing through so that is very key on this setup but uh that is a very clean way to go about doing this without having to touch your line whatsoever other than to set it and remember the deeper you go in between the the uh, plastic gaskets here, the tighter of a pull is going to be to release. So this is something that you're going to have to kind of trial and error to figure it out. Um, because these weights are really kind of hydrodynamic, uh, I don't think you would need to shove it in there too deep. But depending on what you're pulling behind it, right? If you're pulling a big flasher and uh, a flasher fly, you know, that flasher has a lot of resistance. So you might need to tuck in the... Uh, main line in there a little bit deeper because you don't want the resistance from the flasher to uh you know pull this out right you want the actual fish on the strike to pull it out if you're using something smaller like a little dodger or maybe you're just uh you just have a a, 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 a naked spoon on the line that's going to be very little resistance so you might be able to put your line in a little shallower so that when a fish does take it, it gives right away these are all kind of things you need to consider and think about when you're setting up this rig here uh with the tension kind of like that tension release on the the plastic uh you know rubber gaskets in there but that is the second setup and it's kind of like the hands-free version it's like a hybrid fixed 
slash hands free setup. All right, guys, there you go. Everything you need to know about setting up, using, implementing torpedo divers in your setups from the kayak to get your presentations down deep to where the fish are at. Now, if you have any questions about anything I covered, leave it down in the comments below. I'll do my best to get in there and, and answer it to the best of my ability. Uh, if you found this video of value, please subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, share it with a friend is all I ask, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.